All right, guys, we kind of really need this intro. It should be Pope-tastic. But I thought we were a bunch of godless heathens. Sven is happy to point out over and over again, I'm the Jew. So I'm not going to comment on that. Wait, 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 what? And cut. Nice. Chew. <laughs> Coming up on this Linux Gamecast Weekly, Valve pisses on pistons. It's over 10 million. Game Maker Studio supports Linux publishing, and we review Monster Menace Extreme Off-Road and the Apocalyptic 1-2. Let's go. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers Linux gaming news, reviews, and more importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. Now, if you're not watching us live, you should be. We do this every weekend, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at linuxgamecast.com forward slash live. Tune in, join in the chat, scream in our direction. We'll probably ignore you, but occasionally Pedro might scream back and speaking of pedro jordan how's it going oh it's it's going quite well how are you oh i'm doing fine sir anything new i am vomiting horribleness okay that's enough pedro what's been going on then i don't know i'm still trying to figure out when my life turned into a soap opera i don't like drama but it follows me around man isn't there like a bunch of portuguese soap operas though yeah, mostly Brazilian. Got, mostly Brazilian. Who got shot? But yeah, they do speak Portuguese. So, <laughs> and who's doing cocaine? Pedro, have you been have you been holding out on me? No, I don't have anything. It's all lies. You bastard! No. <laughs> Who shot Juan, man? That's all we need to know. No, no, it's lies, man. I tell you, lies, all of it. Anyway, I'm joined every week by these two semi-functioning carbon-based entities. But um, as for me, um, this man's recommendation and the rest of the entire world's, I've watched mm -hmm. a bit of Archer. And I gotta admit, I kind of like it. <clears throat> so I knew you would. I said kind of. I didn't say it was the best thing since sliced I, 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 I knew you would like it. That's not saying I knew you would think it was the best thing ever. That's not what I said. <laughs> Let me know when you're done with your lies, Jordan. No. Anyway, on top of that, working on a new audio system, which failed miserably right before the show, which was fantastic, as always, but... As always. What do we like to do before we get started, Jordan? We like to whore ourselves out to the internet for pennies. And you can throw pennies at us at linuxgamecast.com slash podcast, where we have some lovely RSS feeds for HD, SD video, and SD audio. And we've got some Amazon affiliate links that you can click and then buy stuff on Amazon and give us money. Also, we have give us money buttons where you can give us some money. You can give us about 350 or you can give us 10 bucks a month. And if you give us 10 bucks a month, you get to put something on Pedro's face. Look at that. <laughs> What's yeah. it say, baby? Oh, yeah. It really works. Arch! That's why. Arch! And we have to thank um, Eric T for his $10 a month contribution, and as long as that keeps up, so will the name on the cup. So, fun along mm -hmm. with that stuff. Plenty of whoring completed. How about a little bit of a um, mention about our new fancy redesigned YouTubes? Oh, yes. They've changed YouTube. And we've changed okay. with it. Kind of. You can look at these three fantastic gentlemen on our Linux Gamecast weekly YouTube where you can watch all the streamings. Now, you can do this at the site as well, but you might want to comment with the other 12-year-olds that like to scream faggot. Um... 
outside of that, you know, we got a categories of the big show. We got to play a series where we all play games together. Giggity. Our how-to series where we teach you how to do things you do not know. Or better yet, if you're really clever, you already know how, and you can go in and say you're doing it wrong because apparently you're watching a video on how to do something that you know how to do better. Brilliant. <laughs> but we also need to thank our favorite subreddit, Pedro. Well, it's Linux underscore gaming. The it's underscore. the underscore that actually makes a difference. Yeah. <laughs> So, if you guys ever want to drop us a line without actually resorting to our submit button, that's probably the one place we'll pick up on it. That's a beautiful place. We get um, several stories from there, and when we do, we always make sure we give credit. Fantastic subreddit. If you want to keep track, especially of the latest Steam news and all that, it's boom, right there. Fun stuff. Steam news, you say? Well... How about a little PSA before we get started? Oh, okay. <laughs> and this comes from Linux underscore gaming. Now, this is something I noticed earlier today. And just here's the title for our audio listeners. Um, little Racer Street, a beautiful top-down <laughs> racing game, will be ported to Linux if it is greenlit. Oh. Yeah, well, you know, the, um, Heinbrunt, which I know you're watching the show, and I butcher your name as always because you're an arch user, but um, arch users. he's got a very good point, and this is something I even followed in line with, is what's up with all this if it gets greenlit bullshit lately, question mark. If the game's already on Desura, which it is, and they actually wanted Italics to make a <laughs> Linux version, they could just sell it on there frankly it seems like they're trying to game the system now would anybody disagree with this i would not i think it's despicable behavior and it's just well they're trying to milk people for votes and they're using oh i'll give you a linux version if you vote for me well fuck you <laughs> that's kind of how i feel about it in the entire thing i mean that's um what i wrote back you know Stretch goal-like attitude is unwelcome because Greenlight is not about stretch goals. Uh, with Kickstarter, you might not even have a game. Then you're thinking about, okay, I want to do a Linux port, whatever, whatever. That's fine unless you're saying, mm, we're building on top of Unity, then we're thinking about a Linux. And it's like, no, you don't get any money from me. You click export and do two minutes of testing, you have it running. But with Greenlight, you already have a physical working product and just because you get on steam it'll end up like the tons of other games that us linux gamers have hoard ourselves out over for the past decade only to be met with yeah we never really got around to making that port thanks for all the promotion guys i've seen that happen too many times a little bit jaded can you tell it's no. tragic it really is <sighs> but anyways what do we do, Jordan? What do we do? Every week. Every goddamn week. We beat. We beat. What do we beat, man? What do we beat? Pedro. What do we beat? Oh, I thought we just we... beat Pedro. All right. What? Oh, yes. Let's beat Pedro. <laughs> no! I'd rather <laughs> beat that head horse, which is our Steam, Steam Linux, Linux update, update of the, of the week. week. There we go. We got a little bit going in there. Pedro, I'm going to let you take this one since you love the title. Oh, I love it. I love their wording. Actually, Rock, Paper, Shotgun always has the best titles for, for their articles. And in this case, it's Piston Gets Pissed On by Valve. Oh, yeah. So what's going on here, man? <laughs> yeah, you you remember the Piston, right? We talked about it a few weeks back. And uh, <clears throat> it's was supposed to be the so-called Steam Box, or at least that was the rumor. But now Valve has officially distanced themselves from this, and it's a good thing too, because at a thousand dollars for a five hundred dollar spec PC, they really don't want anything to do with them. Mm. So you mean to tell me that they would want to distance themselves from a? Modular, proprietary, semi-upgradable, thousand-dollar laptop. 
Oh yeah. Jordan, what you take, man? You know what? I'm not surprised. This is just the rumor mill. This does not shock me at all. But I mean, modular motherboards are neat, but the graphics on that would never be great anyways, because what the most they could use is like an AMD APU. And that's what a Radeon 6500 something. And good luck getting that running under Linux because AMD on Linux is garbage, as Pedro can attest. Yeah. Well, I think that's neat. And I'm glad Vibes is kind of surprised that they took this long to get around to telling them to Stufu. Seriously. <laughs> that was the only thing that shocked me. But what do we got up next, man? Next, Jordan, you we want to take this some, one? We got, we got some updates for Steam on Linux and it gets offline automatic repair capabilities. This is from Softpedia. And we yeah. got some bug fixes. We got some crashes get fixed, some UI glitches, and a reinstall issue with Half Life 1. Yeah, CPU supports are the single. Da, 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 da. Steam for Linux has been officially released for a while now, right? <laughs> Highlights yep. of this automatic repair. Some cases where Steam could get. All right, here's something that I know I ran into, and you've ran into, Jordan, is where Steam nixes all of your games randomly after an update. Yeah, it moves stuff around, and then you have to go re reload things there. The directory. It's really, really dumb. Have you had that problem, Pedro? No, I didn't actually know it. Well, I didn't know what happened until you guys mentioned it a few weeks ago. Yeah. Because it was weird. <laughs> well, I'm glad they got that sorted. I couldn't see a big difference. The biggest difference I've seen in the client so far is it's gotten responsive to where you don't wait on things to move after you click them. Yeah. And the picture mode actually loads up once you push the button instead of taking like five minutes. I've never really, uh, outside of going, oh, that's what that's about. All right. <laughs> How do we close this? It's the TV UI. I don't play the a game. The big picture. <laughs> the big picture, man. But that's cool. You already have it. If you're listening to this, you better already have it. At least get that updated. But let's talk Restart about some... your Steam games man dave defeat source james yay nazis versus americans america oh yeah heck yeah <laughs> now this is pretty cool man. i mean this is not a new game um it was released in 2010 well this is the source version of it uh pedro i believe there's an older one correct oh yeah there's the gold src version that's the one i own i don't own the uh the source version <sighs> yeah i never bought the source version there's really no point. I picked it up to tinker around with it. Um, I, I I was actually talking with you, Ben, about that. I'm upset that they haven't uh, released the SDK for Linux yet. Because there's a couple Half-Life 1 mods I want to see ported. Well, I mean, I think a lot of people are still waiting on Gary's mod, man. Yeah. It was like, like 99% done. Last 95% month. done. <laughs> Well, really? you can pick up Day of Defeat Source. I mean, it's worth playing. I liked it. It reminded me a lot of Castle Wolfenstein. So, <laughs> Wolfenstein. It's decent. But no, no, but no sexy Nazis. No, unfortunately, unlike our multiplayer experience, <laughs> which you can see on our LGC player series. We had a lot of fun with that. I would mm -hmm. definitely pick this up if you're into online only. That's the only thing I would like, a campaign mode. It seems like the last couple of things they've released have only been online except for this oh 10,000 or is over it 100,000 10, 10 million 10 million 10 million what is it pedro you seem to have played this <laughs> oh i did play it and it's kind of like match 3 with an rpg side scroller bullet hell time thingy cuz you have to be fast <laughs> Because you're actually on a timer, and you have to be fast and match up like swords to do a melee attack, and wands to do a magic attack, and match the keys to unlock chests and the doors so you can progress. 
and it's it's got that je ne sais quoi let's call it that <laughs> it actually kept me hooked for the better part of two hours and i didn't even realize it so you like shiny things shiny well it's not that shiny i mean the graphics are pretty retro it's just it's addictive so these guys actually sent us a note um before it came out i have a copy of it on android I sent that over. That I'm guessing that's also available in the store. Um, worth four ninety nine if you're into puzzles. Yes, definitely. Yeah, I guess Neat. you might want to check that out. Um, it looks reminds me of like Bejewel with complications. Eh, it's Match Three. You never played the Match Three on those arcade machines. On those arcade? Uh, no, where would we get those, Pedro? <laughs> Yeah, we have some arcade machines here in Portugal. You know, touch-based arcade machines. You touch the three similar thingies together, and they disappear. And are are these things in bars? And do they take money? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, they are, okay. and yes, they do. <laughs> I think we just cleared that one up. Yeah. Pedro, you need to get some help for that, um, seriously. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, they take advantage of drunk people. It's our own fault for drinking. <sighs> yeah, you're boring me to death. <laughs> so coming up next is Half-Life 2 Death Touch. Now, you didn't want to spend the uh, five quid for this, did you? Not really. I'm not going to play it, so I don't really see the point of buying it. I knew I was at least going to cock around with it for a minute, and mainly because I wanted to see how Half-Life 2 was really going to run under Linux, and it run stupidly well. Did you get a chance to play it, um, Pedro? Oh, yeah. Friday morning was pretty much just Half-Life 2 death match from like 8 a.m. to lunchtime, more or less. And it's great. The, the physics on the physics gun, the gravity gun, are still a bit iffy and a bit jittery. <laughs> but that aside, it's actually running pretty well. It looked like a pretty solid game. I had fun in a little bit of deathmatch that I had a chance to play, and yes, I was chastised. It was like, oh, you suck at this. And I apologize, guys. <laughs> I was unable to master the mechanics of the entire game, that which I'd never played <laughs> in my 20-minute session. I'm getting old. I understand. You were a master since Genesis. Old man. Yes, get off my lawn. Hey, I saw your B-reel of it. You didn't do so bad. Well, I was more playing around. I was like, how does this whack? I mean, that was... <laughs> it's like, hey, look at this table coming at me. I don't want if it'll be my friend. <laughs> I want to give it a hug. Yeah. And a bowl of petunias. But that's going <laughs> to wrap it up for our Steam update of the week. Oh, eek, eek. Oh, he's trying to chime in. By the way, Jordan's a bit under the weather. Mm-hmm. That's why he's wearing his sad red shirt this week. I am. It's got a lantern on it. No, it doesn't. This is just a plain red shirt. Now, he tells me. <laughs> so, let's just run into this, man. Well, our news, we got a little bit, and when I mean little bit, I do mean just a little bit. Intel has released Linux graphics driver installers. Um, Basically, what this does Easily install the latest graphic drivers, unable to use this with the 64-bit um, version of Ubuntu, which I didn't have that problem because I run 32-bit since Valve decided that's a good platform. And what I'm going to ask is, doesn't this basically just add the repos for you? Pretty I much. Yes. That's the only thing I could figure out that it does. Uh, if we look at the little GUI installers here, but... Yeah, it adds the repo and downloads the package and installs the dev file. That's it. That's it. Whatever. So it installs the repository. Yeah. Better than the other thing that rhymes with that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, there's one thing I want to point out about that. At All the right. bottom of the article, it says, Update. It seems the bold text above isn't enough, so here's again, in bold plus red. 
do not install this on Ubuntu 64-bit yet. I don't know about Fedora and Ubuntu 32, but on 64-bit, there are some multi-arch dependency issues which can break your system. Brilliant. <laughs> Put that at the bottom of the article. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Terribly thick, people. But that said, web update. We'll have a link to that in our show notes. <laughs> now, this one kind of worried you, didn't it, J-Man? Yeah. So, Game Maker Studio has an export to Ubuntu option. What's that mean? But this this is only on the professional version, which you can get on ninety. You can get for ninety nine dollars on Steam. Yeah, that's the whole thing. Have anyone had a chance to play with the Game Maker Studio? No, but I try. I am concerned demo. about this export to Ubuntu option. Why so, man? I don't know. Yes, you could just get it working easily enough on other systems, but why not just have an export to generic Linux option? Mm. That's a fair point. One thing I don't like about this is it's not native. You still have to install it under Windows, and as J-Man just said, you need to have the professional edition, which is 99 quid, in order to have the glorious, fantastic option of exporting it to the Ubuntu Software Center. Wait, 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 wait. So, on Linux, you have to install Wine, install this, so you can make a game for Linux. That'll only run under one distribution. Mm-hmm. Brilliant! <laughs> Brilliant! So I'm sure they'll see massive adoption from the gaming community on this one. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just, mm -hmm. wow, that hurts my head in multiple ways than one. But Pedro, you brought this thing screeching back oh, to yeah. life after me and Jordan said disparaging remarks about its mother. So it's all yours. <laughs> yeah. The GCW Zero, which you guys covered about a month or two back is going to be available in May. Well, April, May. Even the guy who wrote the article at Lily Pudding, actually, if you see in the, the URL, it says coming in April. And then below, it says coming in May. So, yeah. Uh, the I know for a fact that the developer versions and the, those people that actually helped kickstart it, those people already have their... Or at least they're getting it because they were supposed to be sent out in March. But for the rest of us, we need to wait till May. And I think for a handheld, you know, like Ven usually points out when these things come up, uh, handheld gaming is dead because of cell phones and tablets and all that. It says but you. I... It says, <laughs> says <Ben>. you. <laughs> I have to buy a freaking 3DS so that I can play the new Pokemans. Pokemans? So, Pokemans. <laughs> Can't no, you man, let me is... show you them? That's, that's <laughs> all right. Put that back up, man. That's horrible. I mean, I mean, that is the one thing we said. But looking at the specs on this critter here, man, as we said a long time back, one gigahertz uh, MIPS processor, three and a half inch screen at 320 by 240, man. I got calculators with higher resolutions than that. <laughs> it's the same mm -hmm. resolution as the old PSP. Which was released what? Seven years ago? Uh, 2005. So, eight. Yeah, <laughs> kind of my point, man. <laughs> but, I mean, I guess good on them, right? Um, 500, uh, that's kind of anemic, uh, and 16 gigabytes of storage. At least they include a micro SD slot. Um, good and on an them. HDMI port. Yeah. If you want to, you know, upscale that resolution to full HD. Oh boy, that'll look good. <laughs> 65 inch. Oh yeah. 1920, but maybe a 4K display. It's brilliant. <laughs> but then again, you might only be playing. That's the thing. Is you'd be playing in that low resolution. You'd probably want to play like a NES emulator, SNES, or Genesis emulator, which oh, I don't know exist on Android phones. Just well, yeah, yeah, they do have those emulators. But sometimes and they you have but the. Sometimes you want like actual controls. I guess. You just you just want a Pokemon. I just want my Pokemons. Yes, with your Pokemon. <laughs> that, that's that's pretty much it. You know what? 
Fuck, man. I gotta catch them all. Uh, <laughs> check that critter out on lilyplant.com. And that does it for the news. Okay, guys. It's time to do something that we've never done before. And that is review some games. Now, I was trying this to... This is exciting. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm terrified and petrified and, more importantly, stupefied. <laughs> but here's what we got to think about. Because we don't really want to review games, but we had to come up with a subjective way to factor in our opinions with two hard facts. And we've decided to use the scientific method or the metric of lawn chairs. That's right. Best one ever. One out of three. We have three categories. First one being, does it make with a working? Simple as that. Does it run from Zed? Or does it run out of the box? Easy enough. Part two, shiny. Simple category. What's it look like? You know, is it even if it's blocky and whatnot, you know, with the hipster retro graphics, that's fine. It can still be shiny in its own way. We have an example of that coming up. And our last, which is our personal opinion, is the control section and is it fun? Kind of mixed into two because... You know, if it controls like shite, it's probably not going to be a fun game. And it's the immersion and all. Right. It could really break you away from that. So, we got Jordan. Are you ready? I'm ready. Pedro. Let's go. Are you set? And I'm our good. first one. This is Monster Minus Extreme. Extreme Sunday, Sunday, Sunday off road. From monsterminus.com. What's this game yeah. about, Pedro? It's kind of a, like an RC monster truck game. Although it's not really RC, but it's got similar mechanics. It's the minis extreme off road. But yeah, <clears throat> you know, I'm probably going to save this. <laughs> For the actual review part where we actually start giving out scores. Ven, what did you think of it? Well, that is really going to bring us into it. 18 themes and all <laughs> this. Um, now, fortunately, let's see. 90 tracks, 18 unique Unreal track themes, nitroglycerin. That wouldn't work very good. Nitrous, NOS, injected power, speed stop, custom matter. A lot of works went into this, and we can tell that. But... We're going to start out with the first part, Makes With A Working. Now, for me, after much trying and no fault on the end of the developers, one chair, ah, ah, ah. I had to give it that because technically it did launch, but we could never get it to use hardware acceleration. And I'm using an exotic um, Ubuntu 32-bit 1204 LTS system with an NVIDIA graphics card, which is the recommended system for Steam. So, <laughs> kind of thinking, only one chair on that. Jordan? Um, Jesus Christ, man. Okay, this is really annoying me at this point, is these games that when you start them up, they're at 3840 by 1080 resolution. This is stupid, this is terrible. Why are you doing this? Because you can just run it at 1920 by 1080. It can be done. Lots of games do it. And you don't give me an option to actually adjust the resolution until I have to go through this stupid menu. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give it two lawn chairs. Two lawn chairs. Okay. Two lawn chairs. It works. But, jeez. Some graphical glitches and up here to the Pedro's. Well, I think for once, me and my crap top powered by an AMD video card didn't have any problems. It ran fine out of the box, even with the multi-monitor setup. It set up the resolution perfectly on its own, and it was using only one screen, unlike Jordan's. So, yeah, guess three chairs from me. Three chairs from Pedro, man. That's pretty good. So, one, two, and three. Up next, is it shiny? Now to go back to my first chair, 
I don't know. I mean, the fact the way it worked was it loaded, and you'll see my post on the G pluses and on the Twitter net um, about how challenging the game is without being able to see your track or the car. That was my experience. So again, ah, one chair. The graphics are meh. I mean, I guess they're acceptable. Um, they're not really special at all. I don't think. So they had two. Dose. Bad, cool. I mean, the graphics or what? I mean, everything was working on your end, right? Yeah, everything was working. It was just, like, decent graphics. They're so. not good, but they're not terrible either. Pedro? Well, I did write some professional reviews for an actual printed magazine back in the day. And, well... One of the things I actually pay attention to are the graphics, and this game it uses a tractor engine, uh, much like I don't know if you've seen the you know the players episode we've done with Gear Up. That's a tractor engine too, and in Gear Up it looks great. On this game, not so much. I mean, it's just incoherent. the 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 chassis of the truck is kind of realistic with the reflections and the light effects and all that, but everything else is kind of like stylized, cartoonish, if you will. And then there's no there's no atmosphere on the on the sunny levels. I did play through all 90 levels of it. Um, the bright levels, they have no atmosphere. But the dark levels, man, the game actually really seems to come alive. Probably it's the light effects and the neons and the trucks. But the game, it looks like an entirely different game, and it looks like it could actually be good. But then you go back to a sunny level, and yeah, all that comes crashing down. So for me, it gets one lawn chair. One lawn chair it is. Now it has just one category left. Maybe it can redeem. Mm-hmm. And that is our fun slash controls. This is the really... Subjective, the first two, or just matter of fact, what is and what is not. Now, this is personal opinions. So for me, one chair. Because as much as I tried to control that little red dot, because the map would show up. And I, I, I tried to make it go around the track one time. I, I spent a good 20 minutes trying to do that, since I couldn't really see the track. Or the actual vehicle. Um, that didn't work for me. J-Man. I don't really own a driving wheel, and I guess this could be fun if you're using it, but the mouse controls suck. Yeah, I'm going to give that one lawn chair. What about the keyboard or gamepad support? I did not try the gamepad support because, I don't know, I didn't really want to have to set it up. I was lazy. One chair, that is. One chair. Now, this is... The one guy who happens to have a driving wheel. I do. It's a wingman formula force. It has force feedback, and I know it has force feedback, and it works under Linux, because I tried it with V-Drift, and it worked. In this game, it doesn't. So it deducts a chair right then and there, but if you're using a wheel or a mouse after you get used to it, it's actually... Very bearable. Let's call it that. <laughs> I mean, I didn't make it all the way through, so. But if you're using one of these, one of these things right here, uh, you have to waste like an hour trying to set up everything because the sensitivity and the dampness and all of that, it just doesn't work out of the box. So you have to spend a good 30 minutes to an hour, which was what I spent to actually manage to control the trucks with the gamepad. And, well, is it fun? Like I said, on some levels, yes, yes it is. On others, not so much. And the CPU, and the CPU cheats. Cheats? Yeah, the CPU cars make no mistakes whatsoever. And on the side of the track, there are usually explosive things like coconuts or lawn gnomes or something like that. And if a CPU car goes over it, at least 
from my experience, they don't trigger it. If you so much as graze them, though, boom. Boom. Splooty stuff. So, on my end, uh, it gets two chairs because I'm in a forgiving mood, and it's actually playable with the, you know, with the wingman formula. It's actually playable. Hmm. So, it gets two. And one thing we need to check um, back with our chat room. Um, is it in beta? Well, here's one thing that is good. You can download the demo. For free. Yes, and there is a For free. Linux demo, which is always good to check before you buy. But I do have one thing to say about this game. Okay. It's Mind Wedge's first commercial game. They, do, they did have some free ones, but it's their first commercial game, and... Well, kudos on you guys for, you know, sticking to your guns and making the game to your vision. We need more of that. I'm just sorry your vision doesn't exactly work. Sorry. I'll just make it more awkward. I'll leave the camera on. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> no, but if you want to check that out for yourself, man, that's a monster dot com. Like Pedro says, they got a couple things. You can pick it up on Azura, Amazon... Beamdog, um, definitely check out the demo before you get going on that. And I'm just going to show just a bit more of the gameplay here. Race underwater. Race on the moon. Ah, it's true. I didn't know the moon had that on it. What do I know? So, <laughs> what once we do that? uh It was things beyond things, man. Things. So, with our 3 by 3 by 3 Averaging breakdown. Ah, Jordan, give him the chairs, man. So, I don't know. I can't do math. Just a total. <laughs> it's under total. Total. Grand total. Oh, what? That's <laughs> weird. Why wouldn't you just put it out of nine? That makes more sense. Whatever. So that's two chairs. No. No. This is. No, but... You're high on cough syrup, man. <laughs> I am. Um... Unfortunately, when it broke down to it, guys, um, it got one chair. Which one chair. is... Try it. I mean, it's not a recommended try, but... You know, I'm a huge racing fan. Everyone knows that. I've been screaming for racing games on the Linux, and I was really hoping, you know, and I'm still hoping that... You know, we'll get the demo sorted. I've yet to be able to actually play it on the one platform that it should just run on. But, give it a look. Pedro had some good things to say about it. It works really well, you know, if you have a steering wheel and all that business. So, I think that's fair. Free demo. It might get updated, you know. This doesn't mean it's end-all, be-all. But, that's the end-all, be-all for that because we need... To move on to numero to dos. The apocalyptic. This Numa one just dos. won me over Two. with that title, man. Eins, zwei. The apocalyptic one, two. So what's this about? <laughs> this is a neat little puzzle platformer. It's a platformer where you can walk through walls. Yeah. That's walls pretty much the it. the shadow aren't physical so to say so to speak and well it's a light puzzle game yeah that's fun i like it it is what do you mean by light puzzle you can create holes in the wall i know how to do that yeah <laughs> yeah you can create light sources of your own or shadow you know shadow spots of your own so you can alter the game physics as you go along i thought that was pretty neat mm-hmm well, yeah. we're going to have to give it a breakdown. Yep. Mm -hmm. so, so, let's start with the maze. Does it make with the working? Three chairs, man. Out of the box, no problems. Boom, bombs your uncle. Done with that. Three. It just runs. It's good. Under Fedora. Under Fedora 64 bit. And that's something we should point out. We're running three different distributions, three different graphic cards on three different systems, three different processes, and how about you, Pedro? 
Trace. Three. It runs out of the box on my AMD powered crap top. <laughs> wow. That's a good start. Now, is it shiny? Now, this... This is might be a, a hard sell. Um, I couldn't give it three. I wanted to, but... I just couldn't because I'm sick of retro graphics and I don't know what it is. Maybe the fluid animation, you could tell there was a lot of work that went behind the pixelization, you know, and just the actual, the level design, all that was beautiful and it worked. So I had to give it two on the shiny. I give it three lawn chairs. How do you justify that? How do I, I thought it was a really fun game. I liked it. Well, no, I mean, just for the shiny. Just for the shiny. It, hey, this is also for fun. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Oh, wait, no, this is shiny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. I'm not keeping track of this. Anyways, oh, yeah, it looks fine. I mean, that's basically what it is. It's a it's an retro-style game. It's supposed to be pixelated and does that well. And it's all artfully pixelated, I mean. Yes, it is. It, I mean, it's like if you had a sixty-four I, I, bit Atari. I think it works very well. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Pedro. Okay, on my end, I can't give it three chairs either, uh, because while I love the atmosphere and the retro audio with the eight-bit themes and the graphics, the pixelization makes my head hurt after a while. I have astigmatism and it causes one of my eyes to actually <clears throat> strain a bit more than the other. And so after a while, it starts giving me a headache with some pixelized graphics, which happened with this game. So it gets a two because I love it, but... Two chairs it is in. Yeah. All right. Dos. So... It's looking all right. The Apocalyptic 1-2, a game by... I'm not even trying that name. Antivano. Yes. Antivano. So this is our subjective portion. Fun and or controls. As I said earlier, I dug the concept. It's a funky concept, but it's kind of a fun game. Actually, it's more than kind of a fun game. I dug it, but what really genuinely pissed me off was... No controller support, and something like this I could see just being brilliant with controller support. So I couldn't give it three lawn chairs, I had to give it two. Yeah, and contrary to what I was saying before, because I'm not really paying attention, haha. Um, I, I agree with Ven. I think this game would have been a lot better if it uh, had controller support, just because I hate doing platformers with WASD. Pretty terrible. So what does it get? It gets two long So that's a double deuce, I guess they say. Double deuce. Bringing it down to the and, Mateus. <laughs> and I suppose to break the lovely chain of twos we've been getting, I'm going to give it a three. What? Because, yeah, I what? don't mind platforming with the keyboard. I really don't. And... As rage-inducing and frustrating as the game may be, it actually kept me hooked up to the point where my head started to hurt. So in the fun department, three chairs right there. <laughs> wow. That's our three on three on three, and only one category is subjective. So that brings us to a grand total. Let's do the maths. Beep, boop, beep, beep. Boop, beep. Two. Dos. Dos. Yeah, two chairs. So that is absolutely try it. Definitely give it a go. And considering it cost not. Yep. Cheap as free. The link will be in our show notes where you can take a look for the pop, uh, apocalyptic one at IndieDatabase.com. There is a Linux download. Screen back in this kid's direction or older person's or whoever's direction. Keep them inspired. That's what it takes as a developer. You need somebody to say, you know, good, bad, whatever. This is a good start. I, I like the creativity. I like the ingenuity. I like the thought process behind this. It's new. It's not a rehash of the same old. 
but we're only doing two games at maximum, three games a week. And this is kind of a short week, because look at Jordan. He's just... He's, all, he's barely with us, but he's a trooper, and he decided to stick around for the entire show and actually made it out for it. So good on him. And mm -hmm. good on you guys for screaming back in our direction. And Jordan Hemingway. Pedro, I know you always wanted to talk as Jordan, so go for it. <laughs> well, I actually did reach out to him. Um, he's the guy behind Distance. Well, one of the guys behind Distance, who, which is a game that has been talked about on LGC Weekly. If you don't know, shame on you. <laughs> But yeah, I actually reached out to him in hopes of getting him for, you know, our init reviews, not, well, not reviews, interviews. And he says, well, thanks for reaching out. I'm interested in a, eventually being a part of your podcast, and we really appreciate your efforts so far to help promote distance. Currently, we're crunching for GDC deadline, and in a couple of weeks, so we won't be free until April. But it would be really helpful if you could ping me again next month to see if we can set something up. In the meantime, best of luck continuing to build the site and your viewer base. Thanks. So yeah, so, yes. Yeah, it wasn't. It was like a, well, I forgot that we kind of asked at some really bad timing. <laughs> yeah, GDC is coming up. Yeah, that's a big one. But it's good to see they're interested, and they're the ones um, correct behind Nitronic Rush. Yeah. That's the precursor to distance. Yeah, so that's going to be fun, and it's a racing game, and I love racing games. I'm probably the only one out of you three that seriously love racing games. So I like racing games. I'm not very good at them, but I like them. <laughs> Some are all right. Kinetica on the PS2 was fun. So up next from Canseco. Dragon Box Competition 2012-2013 Hi, just wanted to inform you about Dragon Box Competition 12-13 results. There are a few original games that maybe you want to cover. Keep up the good work. And you can find this over the Open Pandora boards, man. That's the um, Dragon Box Coding Competition. So they had a couple of fun games for the Open Pandora box. Um, now that is the um, handheld thingy, isn't it? Yep. And unlike the GCW Zero we discussed earlier, the Pandora, the cheapest model, costs a whopping. Letting the page load. Uh, where is it? Okay, it's live. This website people like me. <laughs> live. <laughs> yeah, the base price for the cheapest model is two hundred and seventy-nine euros. No, well, that's a bit. That's steep. A bit. It's around three hundred and thirty dollars, give or take. But they have a couple of ported games that's been there: the Duke Nukem's with the 3Ds, Wildlands, um, original games, Aqua Venture, Pandora Microbes, Puzzle Tube, emulators, 8-bit emulators. Um, PS because there have to be emulators. Ooh, applications! Because everyone wants to use LibreOffice on a three-inch <laughs> screen. Absolutely, I have to give PowerPoint <laughs> presentations all the time. She's like, wow, here, here it is. I'm going well, to have a PowerPoint right presentation. Here, track. have my Pandora. There you go. <laughs> okay, let's wrap this feed back up. Uh, Jordan, I'm going to let you have this one. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Live, people. Live. <laughs> oh, this got added recently. All right. This is from RCM for Nyak and RC Maniac, if you will. RC Maniac. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. About your Og Vorbus comments, I, uh, I has been more than proved <laughs> that it provides superior quality to MP3 the same bitrate, so I don't understand why you guys say it sucks. The only valid point you make is that MP3 has greater compatibility regarding hardware support, but even then, many MP3 players and probably all Android devices support Og Warbus. I understand if you reconsider it, if you consider it redundant since you provide MP3 already. That's no reason to bash on it, then. Yes, it is. 
Any anybody else have anything for that? No, but, but I don't but. know. I think he's just a little butt hurt. We were actually bashing on his favorite toy. So yeah, it is. All right, <laughs> and that's going to wrap up our feedback. So, and that also wraps up the end of our show. That's right. So you can always find us at linuxgamecast.com. If you ever want to scream in our direction, hit that submit button. Check this out. Give us a name, give us an email, a subject, your message, a bit of a capture to make sure that you're at least slightly more human than Jordan, which is a not I'm, that I'm more human than human. Yeah, more human. Or if you want to scream back at us, we got some stuff in the forums. Sign up. You can log in with anything. Facebook's the Googs Open ID the Twitters, all that fun stuff. Check us out on the podcast. If you're looking for information, mouse over that. Tap that info button. You get links to our iTunes feed, our video SD, HD, and audio feeds. Also, a way to scream at us and chip in, kick us a few shackles at Amazon.com through your purchases. We have the UK and US links. Also, with the PayPal, one-time donations that get you on the wall, recurring donation, 350 get you on the wall permanently ten dollars a month you get to make me say things like arch and tie, you know put duct tape on a cup yeah why do you have to keep rewriting it i thought the duct tape was a more permanent solution it is but unfortunately the permanent marker isn't with the um liquid and the sweating and all that fun stuff it's not very permanent not then. so permanent it seems it's it's nasty business but definitely check that out at linuxgamecast.com for your Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and more importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. So, let's cue the music. This has been Vin Stone. You can find me on the Twitter, and that's at Vin Stone or plus Vin Stone on the G+. Pluses. Over here is the Pedro. <laughs> My name is Pedro Mateos. You can find me on Twitter at unaccounted4 or on Google Plus at plus Pedro Mateos. And I am ever hidden on Twitter at the Burning Fool, or you can find me on Google Plus as plus Jordan Spung. And let's just all keep Jordan in our prayers this afternoon and this evening, wherever you may be. I devour your hope that he does not die until Monday after it gives me 7 subs- 45 gives me p.m. because I have money subsistence. So let's wave at the lovely people. Bye. Jazz hands.